What up, Ho Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten back at it again. So, many of you have probably noticed that there has been a strange, eerie, creepy, spine tingling, bone chilling silence from my husband as of late. And you guys might be wondering what the cause is behind that. And I would just like to say that YouTube's dumb as double standard of rules strikes again. Yes, unfortunately, YouTube did strike my husband's channel again. And so he has been unable to post for the past few days and still has a couple more days going on his suspension. It's very irritating. It's a very irritating clip that they decided to strike him for. But we all know that if there's one thing YouTube loves, it's to be inconsistent. Chavez is handling it fairly well. Other than the first day, there was, <laughs> there was some great displeasure but you know, this is the new, this is the new norm for YouTube creators. We just have to be really extra overly careful and cautious. And even when you do that, YouTube can still just decide to take your privileges away. That is, that is where we are at on that. It's not pleasant. It's not nice. It's actually a really shitty practice as a company, but unless you're one of the bigger creators, YouTube's not going to hear you. So there's that. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. Make sure you head on over to my husband's channel and show him a little bit of extra love if you wouldn't mind. Today we are here to watch a casual geographic video. This one is titled The Good, Bad, and the Disrespectful Ways Animals Protect Themselves. And I just know, I know skunks are on this list because they they basically shit on you, you know? Like, I just, I feel it in my soul. Anyways, um, I think I already said that I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and sanitized. And if not, now I said it. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The following video may disgust you. <laughs> the following video may offend you. The following video was sponsored by NordVPN. Okay. That guy deserves an award, a Darwin Award. You remember that video I made on animals that got absolutely screwed by nature? Yeah. Well, if I would have known just how bad this guy has it, not, not that guy, him, I definitely would have RSVP'd a spot for it. Oh. That is a dwarf sperm whale. If you've oh, never heard no. of them before, there's a pretty good and slightly depressing reason. This pine-sized porpoise typically measures at seven to nine feet long, can weigh in at 600 pounds. And while that would make him a tank as a human, for an animal with whale in its name, it's pretty travel yeah, size. Small. And that's what makes it the light work of the ocean. The thing is, being plus size works for whales since they're too massive for anything to be a legitimate threat to them. Anything that isn't a malicious equality dolphin. And being small for a whale makes you the perfect candidate to be an orca source of protein. Dwarf sperm whales also regularly get meal prepped by great white sharks. Damn. And can even get griefed by a bold enough fur seal. What? With the ocean being the gauntlet of disrespect it so often is, it almost makes sense when dwarf sperm whales beach themselves. That and the fact that with its sonar not working in shallow water, the whale basically goes blind and as a result panics. Aww. So much so that they often factory reset themselves to heart failure. And this kind of thing happens a lot more than you'd expect. To the point where most of what we know about this dwarf whale comes from the individuals that beached themselves. Aww. And obviously nature felt bad for this eternally screwed cetacean since nature gave it a secret weapon. Dwarf sperm whales are equipped with a sack near its anus filled with reddish brown fluid that I've been told looks a lot like chocolate syrup. So far no one's been brave enough to see if it tastes as good. When this pressed porpoise feels threatened, it'll release its Hershey flavored contingency plan the same way a squid might do with ink. The idea being to confuse a predator long enough to escape to get put on a shirt another oh, day. Oh wow! What looks like a blue whale's time of the month is actually a dwarf whale matrix ducking death. Although admittedly it doesn't take you very far if you proceed to skull check a rock in the process. In a world where death can be waiting at every corner, animals had to get creative to live long enough to make more of themselves. Right. You can be a turtle and carry your personal panic room on your back. You can equip yourself with spines and quills to make sure if you go down, you don't go down alone. <laughs> and if you're a predator, staying camouflaged can ensure your victims never see you coming. Right. Did you see him? I hope so, because he sees you. Being able to go real life incognito is important in the wild, but just as important on the internet with your precious data. I'm which is dead. why NordVPN creates an encrypted tunnel for data and protects your identity by hiding your IP address. Hiding my IP address is exactly what I needed considering what I had to do to my search history for certain parts of this video. Right. You'll yeah. know it when you see it. 
NordVPN allows you to connect to one of thousands of different servers in up to 60 different countries. For example, if you wanted to watch Spongebob, you know, before it became televised ADHD, uh. if you can't watch it in your country, just know Australia and Netflix got you. Also, Nord servers are super fast, so you never have to feel like you're choosing security over speed. And with NordVPN's threat protection, you can be safe from ads, trackers, and malware. So to protect your data, get the most out of your streaming service, and to make sure I get paid, go to nordvpn.com slash casualgeographic to cop a huge discount for a limited time. And with NordVPN's money back guarantee, it's basically risk-free. Unfortunately, risk-free is something that applies to zero aspect of this whale's way of life. Okay, so we all know that I love Internet Historian and his NordVPN ads, but Casual Geographic's transitions are clean as hell. That was clean. That was bad clean. I liked it. I liked it. Also, I like that he's getting his bag. Get your money, boo. Okay, continuing with the video. And when you play the game of life on veteran difficulty just by playing it in the ocean, you have no choice but to get creative. Just ask the hagfish, one of the most vile things in the sea. The hagfish diet consists of all the things society would normally bury or flush down the it. toilet. And that can involve borrowing itself into a rotting and possibly diseased corpse and eating its way out. That's Anything with a meal plan like that probably isn't something you should think about eating yourself. Correct. Unfortunately, most fish don't have a thought process. Which is why when stressed and pressed, the hagfish will produce a bucket's worth of slime and Yes, I do remember the this. The end game to trying a hagfish is the very real possibility of suffocating as the slime clogs again. Yep. And the fish that thought it scored easy calories yep. now chokes to a flat line. That's so sad. In 2017, sad. a truck carrying hagfish crashed, and the hag squirked enough slime to turn the highway into final destination. Uh, it's like a Mario Kart item that just slipped past the sensors. I forgot Kinda about sad. this. And for those of you questioning what a gang of goo guppies was even doing on a truck, well, apparently the hagfish is a delicacy in some places. He's a stronger person than me, that's for sure. Don't bother asking why. No answer satisfying enough. What? What? Yeah. People eat it? Okay, look. So, I know some people have issues with eating, um, like, catfish and lobsters and stuff like that. Because they're, like, they're bottom feeders. And, like, I completely get it, you know? Uh, but hagfish? I, 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 I would have to say that catfish and crabs and all. I would have to say that they are better than hagfish. I can't, I can't even imagine that hagfish would taste. Like, I, okay, all right. You know what? I won't yuck somebody else's yum. It's none of my business. People also eat cucumbers. And I don't just mean the underage pickle. I'm talking about the sea cucumber. Oh, I was like, yeah, cucumbers are delicious. I was very upset. <laughs> the sea cucumber is an echinoderm related to starfish and sea urchins but it looks like it identifies as something you'd wipe off the bottom of your shoe. And ironically, that's exactly the kind of stuff they eat. Ugh. This bottom feeder inhales everything from the dead, disease, and decaying to the stuff that's already passed to another animal system. Okay. Yeah, bottom feeder. That's a double meaning for you. <laughs> and like the hagfish, the sea cucumber has some of the weirdest forms of self-defense you'll ever see. Look at his little Exhibit feetsies. A, anal teeth. You didn't think you were going to hear those words when you woke I'm up I'm sorry? Today, it's happening. And it is exactly what it sounds like. And it's all because some species of fish, like the pearlfish, will use a sea cucumber as a protective bunker. And they do this by turning its south exit into a double lane highway. And if a money shooting slime snake or a butt blasting baby whale didn't demonetize me, this definitely did it. So to keep squatters from breaking in through the back door, many sea cucumbers have anal teeth designed to keep prostate pokers away. And it's not the only defense they have. Most predators will ignore the sea cucumber as a dinner option thanks to the many forms of toxin they have. Right. And when threatened, the sea cucumber will release some of the poison out its lower half as an appetizer. And somehow that's not the weirdest thing that can come out of a cucumber. Because mm, okay. as a last resort in the face of certain death, the sea cucumber will respond by ejecting its internal organs fresh out of its anus in a display yeah. that's guaranteed to traumatize any predator that messed around and as a result found out. Ugh. And like its cousin the starfish, the sea cucumber has the ability to regenerate uh, any organs in And best believe they abuse it. You've never seen an animal weaponize its poop shoot like a sea cucumber. Actually, you have. If you've seen the honey badger, Honey you can find badger. this Fair's face on the Mount Rushmore of disrespect. And one of the reasons is because it too has a secret weapon. Yep. Because when a honey badger wants to make a scene, it'll flip its anal pouch inside out. That's it's disgusting. It's amazing how many times a body part can come up in one video. This Oreo weasel reversing its anus and the smell that comes with it is about as bad as you'd expect. Not only is it suffocating enough to ward off predators, it's also believed to temporarily paralyze attacking bees long enough Ooh. for the black air force to make off with our honey and larvae. So when I call this a steroid skunk, I'm not very far off. A lot of things can come from an encounter with a honey badger, but a Febreze of liquid booty to the nose probably wasn't something you'd expect. It's not something, Because a honey no. badger is just a four-legged assault on all five senses. Same way a vulture's a violation to the nasal order. 
Vultures get cloud off eating all the things nobody else in nature wants to do. Correct. You know, I'm... Um, I'm sensing a theme here. Yeah. Vulture stomach acid is so corrosive that these coarse pigeons can eat the most dangerous substances in the world and go back for seconds. Botulism, cholera, and anthrax would all turn any other scavenger into a skeleton, but vultures are able to handle it. For reference, botulism is a toxin that attacks the nerves and can lead to difficulty breathing, muscle paralysis, and permanent sleep. Right. And it only takes the smallest amount to put you in a coffin. But the nervous system of the vulture is able to eat botulism like candy. Vultures actually make the world a better place by eating all the nastiness other animals would die trying. But it makes how they defend themselves even worse. Oh, no. If anything gets too close to a vulture's nest, it'll respond by vomiting half-digested <gasps> sewer-smelling foulness I can't even imagine. Oh, man. I didn't, I didn't think that at the beginning of this video that I should put, like, a content warning. But, like, but maybe I should have for vomit because this is nasty. This is, this is real gross, y'all. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. Or maybe I just don't want to. Normally they do this only as a distraction, but if any of the violation marinating inside them gets in your face and eyes, it's not going to be a good time to be alive. And there's never a good time to be around this bird for the same reason. Now I can confidently say I've made it abundantly clear that I don't approve of anything this morally bankrupt graveyard goose stands for. Correct. If Happy Feet were Shawshank Redemption, these birds would have been the sisters. That might be a dated reference, but considering what I'm referencing, maybe it's a good thing if you don't get it. Something about their eyes steals the joy from my soul. Yeah. Petros are the freeze-dried vultures of the southern seas. Its diet of the dead, decaying, and downright disgusting is why sailors also nicknamed it the stinker. And as you can probably <laughs> guess, nesting petrels will defend themselves by projectile vomiting the God contents of its stomach. damn it! I knew it! And unlike vultures who do it as a distraction, petrels will actively <gasps> aim their spray at the face and eye, since not only can it blind a potential predator, it's so acidic it can eat away at the waterproof Please coating stop. of feathers. Please stop! Please stop! Doing that to a bird that has to swim for a living is like clipping the wings off a Cessna. It's a dick move of the highest order. And if you take a petrol stomach oils to the face, people several miles downwind will be able to smell how your day is going. And while the smell does wear off, the emotional scars of witnessing what this lizard does last Ah, uh, this is the one that squirts blood, right? The whole right? lizard is a fearsome, intimidating dinosaur that time left behind. Or at least it would be, if he wasn't only four He's inches so long. He's so tiny! And there's nothing wrong with that. It's so perfectly cute. average, and I'm sure he has a great personality anyway. But personality doesn't save it from basically being a dinner roll to threats like wildcats, coyotes, and occasionally wolves. So when its life is in danger, the horned lizard does something so drastic that I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here to give you time to mentally Yeah, because it's gross. The lizard takes aim and shoots blood right out of his <laughs> eye. And while the coyote takes some time to reevaluate his life choices and whether or not he should get tested, the bloody lizard slips away to become- He said, I'm out, out -y. Not only does squirting its own Kool-Aid confuse mammalian predators, it also tastes bad enough to make them decide it's not worth Look at his calories. face! But as for why it has to be out of their eyes, I do not know. Why not? But honestly, if a pupil period how you want to live your life, who am I to judge? It's real hardcore. Like, that's hardcore as shit. And even though you'd expect this bloodlusting lizard to be an Australian citizen, it's actually found in the American Southwest. Oh. For your daily dose of Australian nonsense, look no further than the strophorous gecko. So Similar cute. to the horned lizard, this tiny gecko would normally be free calories for any predatory bird that happens to snatch it up. But? And of course, this gecko has a comeback. Despite what I'm about to tell you, I can assure you that wasn't a pun. Uh -huh. Instead of blood, the gecko <gasps> releases a foul-smelling, bitter-tasting fluid from its tail. Uh, and like with the lizard's blood, the gecko's money shot is rank enough to convince most birds not to eat it. Alternatively, mixing the fluid with ammonia produces a highly flammable substance, and my condolences to the family of whoever had to find it. Oh, that. shit. These geckos are so confident in their secret weapon that they'll often bask in the sun in shrubberies in broad daylight in clear view of predators. Okay. Most geckos avoid conflict by being nocturnal. Right. So this one exposing itself while also having no venom or spine means you're looking at a cocky lizard it gives a whole new meaning to back <laughs> why do y'all let me exist on the internet especially since even though it is foul tasting the fluid by itself is technically harmless which you can't say about the tomato frog in the wild, tomato this frog problem. is only found in one place, and that's on the island of Madagascar. I love him. Unfortunately, that means it also shares an area code with over 80 different species of snakes. God damn! Which have no problem putting a frog named after a fruit on a grocery list. But of course, this bite-sized frog ain't the easy lick it looks like. When a hungry snake on the hunt starts looking at this frog the wrong way, it'll puff itself up and inflate to make itself look as intimidating as possible. If that and the fact that this frog shares a color scheme with a red flag doesn't work, it moves on to plan B. As soon as a snake makes contact, the frog releases a sticky, glue-like substance from just under its skin. Not only is the glue an assault on the tongue, it also irritates the inside of the snake's mouth. Mm. And if the snake's too stubborn to let go, it can end up getting its jaws gummed together for a couple days. Oh shit! Long enough for the snake to tell his friends what happened. 
but it's not just snakes that can get a life lesson. Right. A lot of people will keep this affiliated Kermit as a pet, which is fine, except if you handle them for too long or stress them out in any way, right. you can end up getting glued, and occasionally it can trigger an allergic reaction in people. Oh, it won't shit. kill you, but it's why owners are advised not to try and handle this frog. And for mental health reasons, you shouldn't handle the hairy frog either. It got its name why from the hair-like he structures like that, that grows on males, but the reason for that is actually surprisingly wholesome. Those structures help the frog absorb more oxygen and allows him to spend more time underwater and look after his family and eggs. But it's also known as a wolverine or horror frog, and a backstory for that is a lot less wholesome. Because when this Central African frog chooses violence, it'll purposely break the bones in his clothes, <gasps> force them through the skin, and then use them as DIY claws. Excuse me? I'm sorry? Ah, uh, it's like that guy in fucking Naruto. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I can't remember his fucking name right now, but he fights Rock Lee while Rock Lee's drunk. You know, like, you know who I'm talking about? Y'all know who I'm talking about. But is this a frog? It's, I feel like it's not that serious. Imagine going to fight a guy and he gives himself an open fracture and then tries to slash you with it. Yeah, that's the gross. The bones do heal and the tissues eventually regenerate, but the mental image it inflicts on anyone involved stays with them for life. Right. Claws themselves might not look that bad, but if we solve conflicts by Anderson silva ourselves, world peace would be our not only Not Anderson if Silva. If you don't get that reference, you're one of the lucky ones. But if snapping your own bones and using them as weapons wasn't metal enough, one ant somehow managed to take it a step further. Okay. Because when the Malaysian Calabasas Saunders colony is under attack, as a last resort, a soldier ant will violently contract its abdomen until two poison-filled glands explode. <gasps> These ants full-on kamikaze themselves, while also taking out any enemies caught in the toxic That's blast disgusting. Radius. The glue is acidic, corrosive, and strong enough to immobilize attacking ants. And while turning itself into a tactical puts the soldier out of commission, its sacrifice can possibly save its entire colony. Because if the invading ant colony wins, they'll murk the queen, steal all the food, and even capture some of the soldiers from the losing side and keep them as slaves. Yep. Which is why, if it gets to that point, this ant will self-destruct for the good of its colony. But also why, if ants were human-sized with nuclear weapons, they'd probably end all life on Earth. Ha, 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 ha. And that's going to do it for this video. Bug warfare is like some of the most intense warfare out there. It's crazy. It's wild. I really enjoyed that video. I hope you guys did as well. I just realized that the top of the computer screen in front of me is in the frame. So I'm gonna be cut off at the titties for the entirety of this video. That's cool, that's fun and nice. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, Hope Biscuits. It's, it's getting lit. <laughs>